Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, how can creatine help my brain function? And creatine is this molecule, this substance, that we generally can get from food, but we can also supplement with it. And most times you think about, when you think of creatine, you think about um, high school football players or college football players, um, athletes that are trying to get bigger. They're trying to bulk up. They're trying to improve their muscle energy so that they can be, they can perform better on the field, on the court, wherever it may be. But to be honest, creatine is also used highly in the brain. And this is where creatine supplementation or eating enough creatine in your diet can really improve your brain health and function from uh, better energy, uh, more sustained energy, less fatigue, um, able to take on more complex environments without having to take a rest or without feeling just uh, fatigued or wiped or brain fogged afterwards. Um, and even in high stressful environments, whether that be sleep deprivation or um, exhaustive exercise, it's all going to help the brain uh, as well as the muscles. And so I want to talk a little bit about what creatine is, um, what it's like, how it's used by the brain and the body for energy, our cells. And then I want to discuss one specific paper that shows how it can benefit the brain um, just as much as muscle. So. Let's get started here. We're going to start with this one picture here. So creatine, like I said, is, is this small molecule containing nitrogen, carbon, um, and a carboxyl group here. And what it does is it can make, um, it can make ATP um, by basically getting rid of this phospho group. So um, creatine by itself with ATP is going to make phosphocreatine and then phosphocreatine can be used as the energy source um, to get rid of a phosphoryl group and be used as energy. And so then if we look at this diagram here, we have the different types or the different ways biochemically that we can make energy. So we have on the left here, we have percent of total energy and how, we, how much we use of it. And then down here is time. So basically, how much energy are we using or, or how much of this system uh, can we use in a certain amount of time? And so on the top, you have uh, substrates. So we can get carbohydrates, fatty acids, amino acids can all be used for energy. And then here on the left, we have free ATP. So we generally have a very little bit of ATP just circulating around. Um, it's not much, but it's circulating in our cells that we can use for energy. ATP is this energy currency. Then we have these three systems, the phosphagen system, which is using creatine, glycolysis, which mainly uses glucose, and then oxidative phosphorylation, which uses fatty acids, it uses ketone bodies, um, and that is involving the mitochondria. And so starting from the backwards, oxidative phosphorylation is used more for like endurance training. Um, we, can, we can use it for everything. This, uh, it's this system that is kind of longer lasting. It makes more ATP per molecule. It's more efficient. Glycolysis is used more for power and short duration, um, running, boxing, things that we, our muscles or our cells, our, our brain cells, our neurons need more energy quick. And then the phosphagen system with creatine is used for like very high power. So weightlifting, sprinting, or if we think about the brain, um, under periods of stress when it just needs some quick energy, when there's a lot of ATP turnover, and basically there's a lack of energy. We need creatine to be there to supply uh, the brain with more energy. So I just want you to look at this. Um, creatine is stored in different areas of the, of the body, um, the brain and the body. We can make creatine, um, but we only make a certain amount per day and then we use a certain amount per day. So um, generally as we age, we actually 
lose our total amount of creatine. Our creatine level goes down because not many people are getting enough from their diet to support uh, what's being made in their body. And so if we go to the paper here, this paper is called Beyond Muscle, the Effects of Creatine Supplementation on Brain Creatine, Cognitive Processing, and Traumatic Brain Injury. So this is a 2018 article out of the European Journal of Sports Science. And if we look at the abstract right away, it says it appears that brain creatine is responsive to supplementation, meaning that when we supplement, it will increase. We're going to increase our brain creatine. However, we might need higher or more prolonged dosing strategies. This is because when we first take creatine, uh, most of it gets taken up by our muscles. And so it may take a month or two for it to build up into our, into our brain unless we take a high loading dose initially. Um, okay, and then so then creatine is most likely to exert an influence in situations whereby cognitive processes are stressed. So during sleep deprivation, during hypoxia or lack of oxygen, during performance of more complex activities like uh, dual tasking or um, trying to work with multiple people, talking to multiple people on a project maybe at work, um, cognitively demanding tasks. There's also evidence that shows that increased brain creatine can also be effective at reducing the severity of or enhancing recovery from mild traumatic brain injury. This is really important because um, mild traumatic brain injury can be caused by a stroke, a surgery, or just a concussion. And we know that there are a lot of cognitive factors, whether that be um, just like slight mild cognitive impairment, concentration difficulties, focus difficulties that happen after TBI. And if creatine can help, that means that we are increasing the energy that the brain needs to heal from this injury. So more about the highlights, uh, they'll kind of be the same thing, but let's just talk about them. High creatine content may theoretically enhance brain function through facilitating rapid energy provision during times of accelerated ATP turnover. This just means that when the brain really needs ATP, we'll be using a lot of it. And so therefore creatine is more useful. It's needed during this time um, of rapid turnover. And so if we're using more ATP, more energy, then supplying the brain more creatine can help um, release or help cre uh, prevent that deficit. Um, a higher, more prolonged dosing protocols might be needed uh, to increase in the brain. Creating supplementation is most likely to positively impact cognitive processing during stressful situations. Everyone is stressed, especially at work a lot of times. And so in order to improve this uh, cognitive processing, improve focus, and to get work done more efficiently, creatine can be helpful. And then preventative creatine supplementation can protect brain function in the event of acute stressors. So like sleep deprivation, the acute epoxia, we talk about the exhaustive exercise, or, you know, heck, if you're a football player or a hockey player or a wrestler and may, uh, and may have be at higher risk for concussion, a soccer player, uh, may, this may be something to, to supplement with to help prevent the devastating factors from a concussion or a TBI, um, or at least better help the brain to to heal from it. And so, again, this is talking about the accelerated ATP turnover. Um, there's disrupted bioenergetic ATP turnover during times of sleep deprivation, neurological conditions, whether that be neurodegeneration um, or stroke or TBI. And so the creatine can help work with that. Um, there is another thing. I definitely wanted to look at here. So another thing is that creatine has been used as a therapeutic agent for uh, depression, schizophrenia, panic disorder, so more anxiety-related disorders. And this is probably because most of these disorders have some sort of inflammatory component to it. And in order to heal from inflammation, the brain needs energy, needs ATP. So I want to talk about this one too. Okay, so like I said, we generally get creatine from our diet, but we're not going to get very much. So dietary creatine can vary, but we're only going to get it from meat. We get it from beef. We get it from salmon. Um, that's the highest amount. And so 
it varies from about one to four grams per day. Um, it, so you can get about three to five grams per kilogram of raw meat. And so for, for meat or fish. And so three to five grams per kilogram, that's, that's a lot of meat. And so you may need to eat about a pound of, of meat in order to get the necessary uh, creatine levels that, that we want in our body because we're depleting a certain amount each day. And so um, this can be hard to, to get unless you're eating a pound of meat per day. Of course, that depends on, on your weight as well. Um, and so that's why sometimes supplementation can be beneficial. And so this is where if you don't eat a lot of meat, you're probably chronically lowering your creatine levels, especially as we age. That's been documented that as we age, that lowers. Um, and so we, we for sure want to increase our creatine levels if we have any kind of um, neurological issue, whether that be uh, dementia or neurodegeneration, um, recovering from TBI, concentration issues, fatigue, brain fog. Um, this can all be a factor. And so this is where creatine supplementation can help the brain. I did forget about one other thing here, so let's do that. Um, there was one other graphic I wanted to look at here. And so this, they're just showing at preventative creatine supplementation versus therapeutic. And so if we have this creatine pool and we, we give more of it, we give more creatine, we have this reserve. Now we have acute stressors like uh, a car accident or acute stress at work where we're getting sleep deprived. Um, we just had a new child and now we're not getting much sleep. And so this then acute stressor causes this decrease in creatine, but we still have sufficient amounts. So that's a preventative way. Or therapeutic creatine supplementation may be in old age. We have neurodegeneration. We're not getting enough, uh, we don't have enough creatine to support our energy functions. And so we've insufficient. So we supplement with it to get it back up to sufficient levels. Um, so these are the two possibilities, the two ways that we can use uh, creatine in our lives. So um, I know this is a quick one. I really just wanted to talk about creatine and why it can be beneficial for brain health uh, and cognitively and many other factors. And so if you have any questions or concerns, comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear them. I would love to hear other suggestions as well for future topics. Uh, thank you for listening today. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Stay healthy.